Welcome. I'm Condes Presley, Director of Community and Public Affairs for WSB Television, and you're watching the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. This is the runoff debate for the Democratic candidates in Congressional District 1. In order to ensure everyone's safety, we are all participating from our homes. The Atlanta Press Club gives a special thank you to Georgia Public Broadcasting for helping to organize this video debate. Let's meet the candidates. They are in alphabetical order, Joyce Marie Griggs. She's a retired Lieutenant Colonel for the US Army who was awarded the Bronze Star. She currently practices law in Savannah. Lisa Ring is chair of the Democratic Party for Georgia's first congressional district. She is also a former con congressional, excuse me, she is also a former corrections officer. Now, Lisa is under the weather and not able to participate in today's debate. She sends her regrets. Voters who wish to learn more about Ms. Ring may visit her website. We are also joined by our panelists who will question the candidate. They are Dal Kennedy. He's the bureau chief for WTOC television in Savannah. And Emily Jones, who is a reporter and Savannah bureau chief for Georgia Public Broadcasting. Now, let's get started. Ms. Griggs will have 60 seconds to answer each question, 30 seconds to respond to rebuttals. I will hold up a piece of paper, letting her know when she has 10 seconds remaining. For the full set of rules, please visit the Atlanta Press Club website. That's atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each panelist will ask a question to Joyce Marie Griggs. Dal Kennedy, you get the first question. First question I would ask you, we, we often hear about two Georges and we think about it being Atlanta and then the rest of us. But even within the first congressional district, you could say there are two Georges. There is Savannah. When you look at um, trauma care availability and, and the infrastructure and everything else, and then you look at smaller towns going west, going you know further into the heartland, you've got you know got places like Av, Alma and Baxley and small towns like Scriven, Georgia. What can Washington do if you're elected? What can what can you help Washington do to, to shore that up and bring? some of the infrastructure and some of the amenities that, that we think of in larger cities, bring that and bring the quality of life in smaller communities back up and bring that availability. Yes, Mr. Kennedy, that is correct. There's such a diversity, even within the first congressional district. You get outside of Savannah, you have a lot of rural areas, a lot of poor communities. Healthcare is a big issue in the in the outerlying areas. And what I would do, of course, first of all, as the representative, I will listen to the people so that I can know what they want. But already having traveled the district, I already see what is going on. So what I would do is establish teams. And if you want to call it task force, I'll use that term, having been in the military. But I would establish task force in these rural areas, maybe a centralized location. For example, Waycross is kind of central to a lot of those outerlying counties. And perhaps I will have an office there. And I, you know what? I'm not even opposed to having uh, a, a, a community uh, center or a reach out in some of those smaller areas because they are often overlooked, especially in healthcare. And I want to point out, unfortunately, uh, Georgia, uh, the healthcare here is lacking, especially in rural communities. But I will reach out to them, listen to them, see what they need, and come back with some solutions to help those in the rural and smaller areas. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that answer. Now, Emily, your question for Joyce Marie Griggs. My question actually also gets to that idea of kind of a little bit of a divide within District 1. Um, if you uh, if you win this uh, primary, of course, you'll go on to face Republican Buddy Carter, the incumbent. And he has historically been very, very popular in some of those uh, more rural areas, the areas, you know, in the further southern part of the district, as opposed to in, you know, Savannah and the Savannah, immediate Savannah area where Democrats have, have done much better. So uh, my question for you is, what is your message for voters in those areas that their Carter has been more popular? And, uh, you know, why should they support you over the current candidate who, again, has been quite popular? 
Yeah, I would tell the voters, you have someone that has been there, done that. I feel the heartbeat of the people. There are a lot of suffering people. I am in touch with the people. I understand what they're going through. I understand that a lot of them don't have health care. I understand that a lot of them are out of work. I understand these issues. I understand the economic impact, especially with the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, what is going on with the people in these smaller and rural areas? I understand them. They need a strong voice in Washington that will represent them, represent all in the first congressional district, not just in Savannah, but get out and with the people and uh, meet their needs there. And I will do that. I will get out with the people to find out what they need and they can vote for me. They, looking at my past, looking at my experience, I have always been a worker. I have always worked for people. The people have been my top priority, not profits, not fame, not money, but the people. As a warrior in the military, I worked and served my country for all people. And I will continue to do the same thing for those in the rural area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Griggs. Now that concludes the first part of our debate. Traditionally, the candidates question each other in this next round. Since Lisa Ring is unable to join us, Joyce Marie Griggs will still have the opportunity to share the two questions that she would have asked her opponent, as well as how she would have responded to the questions. Joyce Marie Griggs, please share the first question that you would have liked to have asked your opponent. I would have asked Ms. Rang, what qualifications or experience do you have to represent the people in the first congressional district? And how would you have responded to what you anticipate your opponent would have said? Well, what I would have said is that if you, and I, I believe she would have talked about uh, having been a military mom, um, having been in Georgia in this district, maybe less than 10 years. Uh, I would say that, uh, but what qualifies you to be the next congressional person? What experience do you have to that you can navigate the system in Washington, D.C., that you can navigate the beltway? What, uh, what educational requirements do you have? Uh, just what experience do you have to navigate in Washington, D.C. for the people in the first congressional district? All right, thank you very much. Now you may share the second question that you would have asked your opponent. I would ask her, Reference health care. I understand that Ms. Ring believe in universal health care and a one-payer system. I would ask this question. How do you propose that we're going to pay for a universal health care? Who would you tax to get the money to pay for universal health care? I would also ask, what is wrong with the Affordable Care Act under President, uh, former President Obama, the Obamacare? That's what I would ask her. And your rebuttal to that question would be what? My rebuttal will be is look at the numbers, look at the figures, look at the studies that have been conducted. Uh, doesn't it point to the fact that universal health care is a problem or could be a problem? Whereas President Obama's uh, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, yes, it had glitches, but we were working through those. And as a result, we had more people covered under health care coverage than mainly ever before, and it was getting better. So would you not propose to working on Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act and expand that. Thank you very much. Now that's gonna wrap our second round of questioning. Now for those of you who are just joining us, this is the runoff debate between Democratic candidates for Congressional District 1. Lisa Ring is under the weather and unable to participate in today's debate. We are now going to return to the panelists who will ask questions of Joyce Marie Griggs until we run out of time. As the moderator, I may also ask a question. Dal Kennedy, you get the first question in this round. We're eight minutes in, and I'm going to use the word COVID for the first time. It has affected everything in our country and, and much of our world. It's affected our health care. It's affected our education delivery. It's affected our economy. Uh, what do you feel like you could do if you're elected, go to Washington, what do you feel you could help do to maybe not move us back to where we were, but move us past this whole pandemic? Well, I believe what I would do, of course, is make sure that the pandemic task force is strengthened and that also we will push to listen to the science. Uh, make sure we have those on the panel, on panels, the experts, 
You know, I mean, the average Joe, Do Joe Blow doesn't understand a certain scientific terminology, et cetera, but also strengthen the task force that uh, we have had uh, that has maybe perhaps been diminished some, but strengthen that task force, make sure we listen to those, those that are expert. Also with the pandemic, you're right. We have had so many issues that have impacted every aspect of our lives. We've got to make sure we look to try to make, but number one, I will push uh, people over profit. And I know a lot are saying, open back up, Open, but we're having people dying. I mean, it has increased, especially here in Georgia. It is, we're on fire here. So I will push people over profit. Also, we've got to find a way to get people back to work, whether it's uh, a telecommuting, working from home. We got to make sure we have adequate health care for those that don't have any health care, especially during this pandemic. Also, reach out to the rural areas. Telemedicine is very important. We've got to empower the people. I will also push for another stimulus bill so we can put some All money right. Back Thank you very the much people. for your answer to that question, Thank Ms. Griggs. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, Emily Jones, you get a question now. Yeah, I, I'd like to address your disbarment from practice in federal court for the Southern District of Georgia. Uh, you said yes. in an earlier debate that the Supreme Court had overruled it, but the Savannah Morning News reported a few days ago that that's actually not the case. Um, so I was hoping you could clarify the status of that. Yes, and thank you for asking me that question. As a matter of fact, Mr. Kent, uh, when they introduced me, they said a uh, uh, Savannah practicing lawyer, and I was going to correct that. I am not practicing law. law at the present time, I have practiced law in Georgia, okay? And let me say this, I grew up in a sharecropping family and had to fight and earn my way to success while the forces of racism tried to hold me back. My success led to serving in the U.S. Army for over 33 years as a combat officer, as an Army intelligence officer, and it also earned me a Bronze Star. I've also have a law degree and I've been a fighter for the people in civil rights issues and other issues. And I've been well respected, uh, by, and I'm a well respected leader in the community. Unfortunately, racism reared, it reared its ugly head when I was justly filed charged regarding my practice of law to do the right thing for the, my clients. Uh, the, this bar consisted of an all white, all male four judge panel that determined my faith as a lawyer. In fact, when people heard about this, they were very concerned. Uh, community leaders, uh, religious I leaders. I need to call time on you right now. Came, came I, out to you. support me. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you again. Okay. Dow, you have another question? Agriculture remains Georgia's biggest business. When you look at the folks that are on the ground, in the, in, on the farm working, those that sell equipment, those that sell supplies, still our biggest business. And yet, so many of those that are farming stay just on a razor's edge of, of staying in business. What can Washington do to help Georgia farmers, Amer but American farmers, um, be uh, on a little bit steadier ground and be able to, to make out a living and, and pay their bills? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, farming in Georgia is very critical. Okay, uh, matter of fact, peanuts in Georgia. A lot of our peanuts come from Georgia. Uh, our fishing and our shrimping industry, okay? And unfortunately, a lot of farmers are hurting. Uh, yes, they did get uh, a bailout, if you want to call it that, but they're still hurting. They're not able to make it. Sometimes they're not even able. I've read what they, some of them, uh, especially the vegetables farmers, some of them plied up their produce, was not able to get them to market, et cetera, et cetera. What I think needs to happen with the farmers, we need to make sure we support our farmers. Boy, we need the farmers in every aspect because they are critical to our economy. We need to make sure if there's money Available is low, low interest rate loans for the for the farmers to try to show up uh, their farms. Uh, even if there's grants available, we need to make sure we bring those back to them. Talking to the farmers to find out specifically what they need would be one of my top priority because in order to know what to do for you, I need to know what your issues are. And I will work and fight for the Georgia farmers. They are so critical. Like I said before, the peanut farmers and the other farmers in Georgia. Thank and you very so much for that answer to your question. And Ms. Griggs, and that is now all the time that we have for questions. Ms. Griggs, you do have 60 seconds to make a closing statement. Okay, thank you very much. What I would like to say, I am Joyce Marie Griggs, retired Lieutenant Colonel, Intelligence Officer, running for U.S. Congress, okay? Uh, I want the people to know that in spite of the fact that I don't have a law degree, I have the knowledge. 
As a matter of fact, when I, my last two in Iraq, I worked uh, with the U.S. Embassy staff to help draft legally binding agreement between America and Iraq. I will continue to stand up for the people. I will continue to fight for the people in the first congressional district of Georgia. And I will fight to make sure there's a system that is just and fair for all people, irregardless of race, ethnic background, religious affiliation, gender or sexual orientation. Um, and I would also like to say, I will fight for affordable health care for all Georgians. I will strongly support uh, working families and fight for justice and equality for all. I will fight for the people in Georgia. I am a warrior. I serve my country in the military, and I will continue to serve my country, and I will continue to fight. I can't be bought, and I can't be bribed, and it's not about money. It is about the people. I treasure people over profit. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for that concluding statement. And that concludes this debate. We want to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, August 11th, and that early voting begins on July 20th. We encourage you to visit the Secretary of State's website to find information on voting locations, as well as how to request an absentee ballot. Thank you to Joyce Marie Griggs and the panelists for participating in the debate. I also want to say thanks to the Atlanta Press Club and Georgia Public Broadcasting for arranging today's debate. For more information on the full schedule of runoff debates, please visit atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be available for viewers to watch on demand at Atlanta Press Club's Facebook page and on Georgia Public Broadcasting's website, gpb.org. I'm Condis Presley. Thank you for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series.